Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to read about bindings and scopes. Each binding has a scope, which is the part of the program in which the binding is visible. And I think I already wrote that in here. Yep, sure did. And okay, so for bindings defined outside of any function or block, the scope is the whole program. You can refer to such bindings wherever you want. These are called global. But bindings created for function parameters or declared inside of inside a function can be referenced only in that function so that they are known as local bindings. Every time the function is called, new instances of these bindings are created. This provides some isolation between functions. Each function call acts in its own little world, its little environment, sorry, its local environment, and can often be understood without knowing a lot about what's going on in the global environment. Bindings declared with let and const are in fact local to the block that they are declared in. So if you create one of those inside of a loop, the code before and after the loop cannot see it. In pre-2015 JavaScript, only functions created new scopes. So old style bindings created with the var keyword are visible throughout the whole function that they appear in or throughout the global scope if they are not in a function. Uh, just want to make sure that this part isn't going to say what I'm about to say about this part of the, the code. Okay, so we got let x equal 10, if true, let y equal 20. So we just decided that uh, x is going to be visible basically anywhere. Y is only going to be visible inside of here. And var z is equal to 30. We just decided, or just were informed, that var uh, will essentially, var z equal 30 is going to create a binding for z set to 30, that's visible basically anywhere. It's not going to be scoped to the if statement, whereas y, since it's created inside of the block for the if statement, is only going to be defined inside of there. Um, and actually, I changed this. I think this used to be um, x plus y. What was it? No, x plus y? Yeah, x plus y, because these are the two that are visible there. So if we uh, run this, y is not defined. Ah, perfect, so it's definitely not y. And the reason is, is because of the let y equal 20. If we change this to z, z is created using the var keyword, so it's not local to the if statement block. And in that case, we'll get 40. Ah, perfect. Each scope can look out into the scope around it, so x is visible uh, inside the block in the example, which is to say in here. Uh, inside of this if scope, the if statement's scope, we can look out and find out that x has been bound to a value of 10. The exception is when multiple bindings have the same name. In that case, code can see only the innermost one. For example, when the code inside the have function, which is this guy, uh, refers to n, it's seeing its own n, meaning this parameter, not the global n, meaning the parameter, sorry, the binding defined on line five. Uh, so when we console the log have 100, uh, n for the function have is gonna be referring to this parameter, which has been bound to a value of 100, so we get 50. And on line eight, we're just looking for a value uh, binding called n, and n has been bound to a value of 10, so we console the log 10. Look, 50 and 10. Excellent. We've got another mini section called nested scope, and we'll just keep moving. JavaScript distinguishes not just global and local bindings. Man, some of these sentences are weird. Anyway, JavaScript distinguishes not just global and local bindings. Blocks and functions can be created inside other blocks and functions, producing multiple degrees of locality. For example, this function, which outputs the ingredients needed to make a batch of hummus, has another function inside it. Const hummus is equal to a function with a factor. Const ingredient is equal to a function amount unit name. Inside of that, we've got let ingredient amount equal amount times factor. So one parameter here multiplied by another parameter from the outer function. And then if ingredient amount is greater than one, unit plus equals with an S. Okay, so we're pluralizing a thing, um, which can get kind of tricky. Um, well, we don't need to worry about that. Pluralizing things can be kind of a painful situation, though. Uh, Console.log, and we're using string interpolation to use the, uh, the value of the binding ingredient amount. Uh, same for unit and same for name. Uh, the ingredient one. And so we're essentially, we've defined, a so let's get this into code. We define a function here, and then we're calling, which is also inside of the function hummus, and then we're calling that function, uh, what is it, five times? Again, all inside of the constant, uh, our, our Sorry, the binding called hummus, which is itself a function. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And nothing's going to happen, right? Now, the reason that nothing happens is because we actually haven't called any functions here. This is another thing that a lot of people run into that's an issue, because um, 
even though on line 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, we are calling this function ingredient, and we're giving it parameters, and it has a constant of log in it, so it should be, something should be happening. The only problem is, is that uh, this function hummus hasn't been called yet. The only way that any of the code inside of here is going to run is if we call hummus uh, with some factor. Um, so, okay, so let's see what they say. The code inside the ingredient function can see the factor binding from the outer function. Makes sense, right? So the factor they're talking about here uh, is referring to the factor binding here, which is a parameter. Uh, but it's local binding, such as unit uh, or ingredient amount, so that's a parameter for that function or a binding defined within it, are not visible in the outer function. Uh, the set of bindings visible inside a block is determined by the place of that block in the program text. Each local scope can also see all the local scopes that contain it, and all scopes can see the global scope. Uh, this approach to binding visibility is called lexical scoping. So lexical scoping sounds like a vocab term. I don't know that I've heard a clean definition of it yet. So the set of bindings physical, each local, uh, let's say the set of bindings visible, now this seems like a pretty okay definition, so we'll go with this. This is going to become important later because there's a fun thing in JavaScript called closures, which takes advantage of this lexical scoping. Um, so we'll leave that. And all right, so let's mess with this code because I don't like when they give me code that I can't run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to call hummus, and I'm going to call it with a factor of 2. I don't know why I'm going to call it with a factor of 2. I'm just going to. But what should happen is, is now that I have a factor, uh, with a binding for a factor, which is going to be 2, the definition of this function is going to occur, meaning this is going to be available for use. So on line 9 through 14, when I call that function, uh, it looks like the amount is these are all going to be bound to the amount uh, unit and name. And then factor was given by my call to hummus on line 17. So let's go ahead and hit enter and see what we broke. Ah, excellent. So two cans of chickpeas, uh, half a cup of tahini, 0.5 cup lemon juice, two cloves garlic, four tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of cumin. Uh, sweet. So the factor at that point we could determine, well, probably we could determine if we just thought about it beforehand, but this is essentially if like, I want to quadruple that recipe because I'm having over friends. Well, then you need this much. So that's pretty much it for this section. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.